For people who are not aware, LEGO Star Wars is one of the best and most iconic licensed LEGO series to ever be created, with lots of merch like plushies, video games, keychains, watches, alarm clocks, pens, t-shirts, magnets, many specials, including a cameo in the LEGO movie. Come on, Chewie, hit the hyperdrive! And of course, LEGO sets. And it would be no surprise they have LEGO TV shows. And to celebrate the release of Rebuild the Galaxy, which was at least, I think, one or two weeks ago, I have watched all the LEGO Star Wars shows, and I will review the LEGO Star Wars shows and share my opinion on each of them. Though when I get to Rebuild the Galaxy, there will be spoilers, so click off when I get to it, or you can skip to the ending. The Yoda Chronicles is a really fun series, and even though I didn't grow up with it, which also applies to any of the other LEGO Star Wars shows, it is amazing. However, finding Attack of the Jedi in good quality is extremely difficult, but the one I found was in okay quality. It introduces Jet 14, probably one of the coolest non-canon Star Wars characters, or LEGO exclusive Star Wars characters. The plots are pretty unique, and out of all the episodes, my favorites were Race for the Holocron, because of how fun it was, and it's one of the few episodes where the villains win. And it's a pretty good treat when an awesome villain like Vader wins, which he also does in Clash of the Skywalkers, another one of my favorite episodes of the Yoda Chronicles for the same reason, because it's another villain win ending. But both endings are satisfying depending on whatever side you pick to win, as it's one of the few shows where you choose the ending. You either want the Rebellion to win or the Empire to win. And the Rebellion win ending is dubbed as Duel of the Skywalkers on Disney Plus, in case you didn't know. Which is something that isn't in a lot of shows, but this one does it well. And I love it since you get to pick sides. As this also has some great animation for its time. Especially considering how it's animated by Wilfilm and it looks better than Ninjago's animation at the time this was released. Since Ninjago was supposed to end. Like the other shows coming up, it's paired with amazing fight scenes and lightsaber battles. And humor was very funny a lot of the time. And this was actually the first Lego Star series with Kirby Morrow's Anakin, rest in peace. And hearing Cole as Anakin was so funny to me because of Ninjago, and I only think of Cole when I hear Anakin or any other character voiced by Kirby Morrow. After the show, I really wish Jack 14 could be used in more stuff than just Lego, but we'll get to that soon. Droid Tales is by far my favorite of the bunch. It retells the first six stars films in the most funniest way possible, and they even have an episode with Rebels that is paired with the A New Hope episode. The animation is amazing, and is still animated by Will Film. When Ninjago's animation was getting better with Rebooted, which was released the year prior, and Tournament of Elements, which was released the same year as Droid Tales. And the fights and the lightsaber battles are still good. Maybe even better. The humor is so damn hilarious. And it feels like watching a TV show version of the complete saga with updated graphics and voice acting. What's the going on? I thought I'd have a big part in this. R2, R2, R2. <laughs> Not you, R2. Him, R2. R2. And even some homages to the complete saga. Or just the LEGO games in general, like seeing the builders from the TT Games logo making a cameo, and the Yoda death sound being used, is also very cool. And that these were in the Revenge of the Sith episode, and is why Crisis on Coruscant is my favorite episode. I love some of the voice acting choices, like Kirby Moore reprising his role as Anakin from the Yoda Chronicles, and Kiyadi Mundi sounding like Sensei Wu since he's voiced by Paul Dobson. Yeah. Like the previous show, there are some Ninjago actors in this show too, like Yoda Chronicles. If you want to see the full cast, you can look it up. And seeing Lando and C-3PO's actors and Yoda's Clone Wars voice actor reprising their role, as they were also in the Yoda Chronicles, are some of my favorite performances in the show. The way they show the deaths are a unique take, as they do it in a more kid-friendly way. And the iconic scenes of the movies are shown in a very funny way too. The regular story was good as it's about R2-D2 getting kidnapped and C-3PO trying to find him, 
just for the kidnapper to be Lando, but actually the Empire making a battle droid machine. And then Admiral Akbar defeats the Empire again. But the retelling of the movies and shows are what carry the show. I wish there was another series with the retelling of Force Awakens to Rise of Skywalker. At least we have All Stars, which shows a story taking place during that time period. Even though it came out before Rise of Skywalker and um, Rise of Skywalker sucked. But I'll talk about All Stars when we get to it. The Freemaker Adventures is a disappointing mess that could have been top 10 if its execution was so much better than what it was. And this show is somehow the longest of the bunch, but because it's a new story, I'll let it slide. I tried to like it, but it ended up being my least favorite of the LEGO Star Wars shows, or my least favorite of this bunch. But not my least favorite Star Wars show overall, because Resistance is my actual least favorite Star Wars show, and The Book of Boba Fett, my least favorite live action Star Wars show currently, was also bad but not worse than Resistance. And these two make the show look like a masterpiece. I haven't seen Acolyte, Obi-Wan, or Mando Season 3 to compare yet, so I won't say anything about them. Before this video, I made sure to rewatch every show, but with this one, I only watched the episodes that stood out to me the most, which I'll show here, because watching 26 of this again would just feel like it takes forever for what I'm about to say. But first, let me share the positives. They have absolutely amazing animation with really cool lightsaber fights as usual. Sometimes the stories are really good and it gets better as the series progresses. And there's good lore. We see Jack 14 after years since his last major role since he only cameos in Joy Tales' final episode. And we get more lore for him after the Yoda Chronicles. And it was nice to see him again. The Kyber Saber is my favorite thing about the first season story. And that being an overpowered weapon that can make whoever wield it unstoppable. But destroy the moon with its abilities. And it can also destroy other things too. And can corrupt you like the One Ring from Lord of the Rings or the Scrolls of Forbidden Spijitsu from Ninjago. And it had to be broken into pieces and scattered across the galaxy. The Freemaker theme song is really catchy as it was made by Michael Kramer, who did a lot of songs in Ninjago, I mean the background music. The voice acting was really good, except with Rogers. Cordy and Xander have great voices, but Rowan's voice was casted really good since it was the same voice as Gumball from The Amazing World of Gumball and the current voice of Leonardo from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And I'm talking about Mutant Mayhem and Tales of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. But I'll get to more voices when we talk about two other characters, as well as having a few interesting new characters like Nare, Cordy, and Grobala the Hutt. I like Nare the most since she is voiced by Grey Griffin, who voices a lot of characters like Vicky from The Fairly Odd Parents, Daphne from Scooby-Doo, and a lot more characters. She is the Harumi of Star Wars. A spy for the Empire pretending to be a Jedi to get the Kyber Saber. And Grubal is rather hilarious as he's voiced by the same guy as Master Shake from Aqua Teen Hunger Force and Gazpacho from Chowder. And his dialogue made me laugh so much too. And is the funniest character in the show. This is one of the few shows where I root for the villains. Specifically those two. And even though Cordy is an overprotective middle child sister who also has to join in on her little brother's adventures with her older brother. She's the least annoying of the main characters. Is actually pretty good, since she's a lot more intelligent because most of the characters in the shows are idiots or careless most of the time. And it kind of makes her more of the Squidward of the main characters and knows when she has to not let her brothers do anything stupid, but still has a good heart. And the season two introduced characters are also really likable. Like Colvette Valeria, she is a rebel pilot and also a great character as one of the few new heroes in the show that I actually liked. And we learn more about her in Summer Vacation. Becky Smoochenbacher is Xander's crush who joined the Empire when the Freemakers left the wheel. And that turns out that she also loves Xander. We only hear her name until we actually see her in the final episode 
and she was a great and underrated character that deserves to get used more. Dengar also gets some relevance, since Grubala could only afford him and not Boba Fett because Jabba has Boba Fett. All the other characters from the actual Star Wars, which includes Dengar like Darth Vader, Palpatine, Luke and Leia, Lando Calrissian, Maz Kanata, Hondo Naka, Harrison Dula, and Admiral Akbar, are all amazing too. The ship designs are amazing, like the Arrowhead, my favorite vehicle from the show, the Eclipse Fighter, and the Star Scavenger, which is actually only better in the show than in the sets. The set was overpriced when it first released, and it and it still is, and the set looked awful. The Lego sets for this show are great, minus the Star Scavenger, and the locations we have never seen look cool, and the concept of the series was also good. But now, the negatives, with some positives at least. The other characters introduced in the show, mostly the ones in season 1, are pretty annoying and the weakest part of the show, in my opinion. Particularly the other members of the main cast, so let's start with them. Who they are and their personalities. Rowan is the hyperactive youngest sibling who keeps ignoring his older siblings to do stuff without thinking and makes bad decisions regularly. Xander is the oldest of the bunch, loves ships, and is kind of idiotic, very hyperactive as well, and follows Rowan with his adventures. Roger, the droid of the main characters, is my least favorite of the main characters, but not the worst of the show. He is another stupid comic relief character who keeps getting himself injured or destroyed and destroys stuff. He was funny the first few times, but after the first two episodes, I got sick of his stupid shenanigans because they got so repetitive, and it's either him destroying things or getting destroyed. And that entire part of Showdown on Hoth, where his voice box was frozen, making him only utter and say the word genius after saying he wasn't a genius for getting the Star Scavenger and himself frozen in the lake, trying to heat it up, but being stupid because they were on a frozen lake, it just got super annoying really quickly, and it felt similar to Zane malfunctioning and speaking backwards, but just annoying and stupid. Genius! 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 Actually, quite the opposite. Genius! Genius! The reason why Zane's saying the most random stuff like The treadmill was invented in 1818 while malfunctioning and speaking backwards can do. What's wrong with that? I don't know. I think he's talking backwards. Slow down! We can't understand you! Was funny because he doesn't have an annoying voice like Roger. And some of them are so random it's funny, and it was a funny part of the episode they were from. Roger was stuck with only one word because of his stupidity causing him to freeze, and it again got repetitive. Speaking of Roger's voice, his voice seems to be more higher pitched than any of the other battle droids in the other Star Wars shows and movies. And his screams and yells are deafening, it makes him more obnoxious than he already was combined with his poor attempt at humor. Ram and Bash, the two minions who work for Grabala the Hutt, are by far my least favorite characters in the show. They're basically Star Wars equivalents to Ragmunk and Bluck from Ninjago, idiotic henchmen who screw up all the time. I don't think there are many funny moments from them either, besides some of their fights and telling Grabala to use his head. Though I like their voices, as Ram is voiced by Danny Jacobs, the voice of King Julian and I'll hail King Julian and sang many songs on Phineas and Ferb. And Bash is voiced by John DiMaggio, who voices Jake from Adventure Time, Bender from Futurama, Schnitzel and Shouter, Leadfoot, Crosshairs, and Nitro Zeus in the Bayverse Transformers, and many others that would take too long to list. And that's it for them. Durpin and Plume Striker are Imperial Officers but are mediocre characters rather than bad, unlike Ram and Bash. Durpin and Plume Striker are at least distinguishable, as Durpin is a slacker who doesn't like doing his job and Plume Striker wants to do his job, is more intelligent and hates being bored. 
Though I like Plume Striker more for that reason, and I think he's a tolerable character, but I didn't want to separate them because they feel more like Ricky and Joey from Lego Friends Girls on the Mission of Star Wars, as they're both moronic henchmen, with one slightly smarter, but they fight a lot over things. And Joey and Plume Striker seem to have similar beards, and MOC is Palpatine's droid he uses to hunt Rowan and is okay, but is a bit annoying as he is just an indestructible robot who refuses to die or give up until he kills his target, and he doesn't shut his mouth. For the ones I think are the best out of all these characters I listed, the other two Freemakers become more tolerable as the series progresses, and even at the start, both Rowan and Xander were good siblings, but I know like Xander's carelessness, Rowan's carelessness is often unintentionally ends up being good, Though I'd still say Cordy's the only good freemaker of the bunch because the other two are just so bad in like the first season. Plume Striker, I've also mentioned, is also more tolerable than his companion Durpin because of his enthusiasm on being an Imperial officer. And even Durpin is not half bad either. And MOC wasn't as bad and has a cool design as well, being based off the Lego turn mock and Palpatine calling him his own creation which feels like it told kids who didn't know what mock means its definition, despite somewhat being annoying and his design being pretty much wasted on his personality they gave him. Another aspect I think really falls flat is the execution and the writing, which a lot of stuff for both was dog shit in my opinion. Some of the jokes are just plain unfunny unless it involves Grabala. The many moments that are meant to be funny just end up being stupid and just didn't make me laugh. Now I'm the ultimate power in the universe. And I'm only 12! Especially with, as I've mentioned, Roger. Which I admit, again, funny the first few times, but again, his shenanigans got extremely repetitive. But still did have a few moments, but I'm just going to have to say that. Grobala is the only character that has made me laugh more than once. And the few moments that were... The most funny was when Cordy screamed after Xander bought the wrong ship and spent all the credits they needed for the one they're trying to get. You're gonna want to stand back. Another step. Two steps more. That's it. Good. Thanks. And as I've mentioned before, when Ram told Grabala to use his head after she told him in Bash, to let go of their blasters stuck on a magnet before Xander hits him with a tank of air sending him flying and hitting Ram and Bash and crushing them. Fellas, I'm just gonna throw this idea out there. Take it or leave it, but you could just let go of the blasters, right? And walk into this battle zone without a weapon? Pfft. Use your head, boss. Hey, Grabala! <laughs> Is, uh, familiar? Yeah, been here before. <laughs> Which one of you has keys in your pockets? The story starts bad, as has many stupid moments that I absolutely hate, and a shit ton of filler, especially in season one, which actually made me bored while watching, which I skipped, of course. Even during non-filler episodes, I felt bored watching some of them. When it isn't, there isn't any ship or lightsaber fight, but as I've said, the stories and the main characters get at least better as it progresses. Though during my rewatch, I decided to skip all of the filler episodes of season one, which are or just episodes that are not about finding Kyber Saber crystals, and it made the season more tolerable than when I watched every single episode, but still has so many problems like what I have said. And the final five episodes are my favorite since they're the strongest episodes. With the main characters being unstoppable with the arrowhead and worrying to see what happens after MOC steals the arrowhead. As again, being excited about the villain winning again, even if MOC wasn't as great as Vader. And seeing the final duel between light and dark was still awesome. And it's really hard to enjoy it when the main characters and the other new characters are some of the most annoying parts of the show and when it gets boring or stupid. But it does get good in that at least the main characters of the show aren't as bad as Resistance main character. K 
Kaz, who is by far my least favorite Star Wars main character and the real most annoying character from Star Wars in my opinion. Star Wars All-Stars is by far an improvement over the Freemaker Adventures and I really like it. We see the lore of the Freemakers and Roger and learn about their origins and see their future. And we see Xander as a toddler and Cordy as a baby and how the Freemakers met Roger. And rather than being another OT and prequels TV show, it's two separate stories that take place during Solo and the sequels, as well as one Rogue One story in From Trenches to Wrenches which is the lore for Roger. And I personally think this show portrays the sequels better than the sequels, even though in my opinion, and I know every Star Wars fan who has ever existed will want to beat me to death for saying this, but I like the sequels, except The Rise of Skywalker and Resistance. The freemakers from the previous show are much better in this show, like the final five episodes of season two in, this se in their series. And Cordy becomes... A Republic Senator. Heck, we have some good new characters in this show. Moxie, the daughter of Xander Freemaker, is easily my favorite new character in this show. She and the parents of the main Freemakers, Lena and Pace, are also good characters introduced. I like Pace's voice since he is also the same voice as Casey Jones from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2012. The humor is still pretty funny. And I think it's funnier than the humor in the Freemaker Adventures. Just as usual, it has great animation provided by Will Film. Rest in peace. And it was also during the time the Oni Trilogy came out. And that was the biggest improvement of animation for Ninjago. And it still has fight scenes that look amazing. And the stories are really good. Roger actually has a badass moment in the show. When he tried to shoot the TIE fighter coming from the back on his own and not missing. That's probably my favorite scene from him ever. One thing I didn't like about it was that like Lego Friends Girls on the Mission and Nexo Knight, it ended on a cliffhanger. So we didn't see how it ended. And because The Rise of Skywalker wasn't out yet, even if I already said I hated The Rise of Skywalker, I would have wanted to see how the story would end for the Freemakers during that time. Though I wish we got physical minifigures of the Freemakers' parents and Moxie, and we got sets for the show, which is unfortunate, because the Yoda Chronicles, Freemaker Adventures, and Rebuild the Galaxy got sets that are exclusive to those shows. Though the closest thing I can think of for Droid Tales getting a set is Anakin's custom Jedi Starfighter, which is used for Admiral Akbar's ship, but that's it. And Grabala also deserves a physical figure. So at least Grabala returns in terrifying tales. Rebuild the Galaxy is the new Lego Star Wars show and is the shortest of the bunch as of now. But it's absolutely fantastic so let's talk about the show. The only negative I can say is that there is no R2-D2 and he is in so many of the shows. And why do we have C-3PO but not R2? Now the positives. Compared to the previous shows which use a Ninjago style in animation since they were all animated by Will Film. Rebuild the Galaxy uses a more the Lego movie style in animation, which looks beautiful. And all the fights and the lightsaber battles are absolutely amazing. I've seen all four episodes and they're absolutely amazing. It's basically a what if show like Marvel's What If, but with Lego Star Wars. I love the twisted characters like Akbar clones, Darth Ray. Bounty Hunter Ewoks, Bounty Hunter C-3PO, he's called Beach Luke in the Dark Falcon, so I'm going to call him that, Nice Maul, Darth Rose Tico, Darth Jyn Erso, Darth Nubs, I don't know if this is official name, but Darth Rusty, because he does look like Rusty from some of the shows, Darth Kit Fisto, Darth Jawa, Darth Jar Jar, Jedi Vader, Jedi Palpatine, Jedi Jabba, Jedi Cad Bane, Jedi IG-88, Jedi Dooku, Jedi Lobot, regular Leia, good Greedo, and in this universe, Greedo is Leia's crush, Han Solo being a plot twist villain, and Landalorian. I love that Darth Jar Jar officially became canon, well, I mean in the Lego Star Wars canon at least. Even though he didn't have much screen time and died really quickly. And also 
Jedi Bob officially appearing in this show. Speaking of Jedi Bob, Barbarian Affle is a really good and easily my favorite character. Whose last name, Affle, is adult fans of Lego. Like, MOC is my old creation. And the new main characters are also great. Dev became a Sith Lord named Darth Devastator, which is cool to see as a Transformers fan, because Devastator. Sig and Yessi are great main characters, as Sig started as a normal guy who wants to be normal, but after causing the galaxy to be recreated, he wants to bring the galaxy back to normal, and bringing Dev back to normal, even though it turned out to be impossible. I really like his character, and his and Dev's last name, Griebling, is, of course, the term Griebling, which is a building technique. Yessi is easily my favorite of the new characters, besides Jedi Bob, as she really wants to do more fast and fun things, and she's really cool. I also like how her last name is Scala, which was an old Lego theme that would be used for the idea for and become Lego friends. Dev was once a guy who wants to have more fun, and after the galaxy got rebuilt, he became Darth Devastator. He is close to one of my favorite Lego Star Wars villains along with Nare, and Servo is the droid of the main characters. I think he is what Roger should have been. And when he started to speak, it was a bit funny, and having a charging ability makes him really useful and being cool. I just also love all the references, like when Han Solo name dropped Star Tours, as well as the tie wings being similar to the uglies of a similar design from the Freemaker Adventures and All-Stars. The humor overall is just so funny. I really like the story. They managed to make emotional scenes actually feel emotional, like Jedi Bob's backstory, Servo's destruction in Part 3, as well as Dev and Sig's separation. And Servo and the Star Wars Disney Plus intro changes depending on the episode. In part 1 and 2, they just have him doing the normal gonk droid sound, then him talking in part 3, and then him turning off after he was destroyed, as well as there being background music, being normal in the first three parts, and part 4, having emotional music. Speaking of the music, Michael Kramer also returns to do the music, which is amazing. I really like the final scene, that there might be a season 2, where we see... Where we think that Mando's there, but it's actually Lando as the Mandalorian. But Grogu is still the same. Or is he? I think that the first half was good, but the second half was peak. I can easily say that Rebuild the Galaxy is the peak of Lego Star Wars shows. And I'm hoping they do a season 2. And if they ever make a season 2, I'm hoping that it's even better. But who knows what they'll do. I think that all LEGO Star Wars shows are for everyone who likes Star Wars. Even if I enjoyed 4 out of the 5 completely, they all have something that I can consider good. And we need more of them as well. As well as more characters made by LEGO. What are your thoughts on the show? Which shows would you say is the best? Leave all your thoughts in the comments. And I'll see you later. Bye.